Shalom friends and welcome to House of David. Today we're going to finish our studies on the uh, book of Romans chapter 8. And I pray that you have enjoyed what I've been teaching this week from the book of Romans. Well, after this message, I'll be back here and I will minister to you as whatever God will release into my heart to share with you. And of course, I'll be talking about the book of Romans even more because this book is the most powerful book to my concern throughout the Bible. One of the most powerful books. So stay tuned. Don't go away. Open your Bible to the book of Romans chapter 8 and study this chapter with me again. Right after this, I'll be back here to believe God for your miracles. Stay tuned. Don't go away. So my question was done. God has answered my question, and I understood that the law of God is perfect. God doesn't throw anything away that is perfect. Aren't you glad that the Holy Spirit is inside of you? He is greater than you. See how powerful the Holy Spirit is? He can take the Word of God, everything what God said, and make it work. Hallelujah. And then it says, so then, verse 8, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Even if they want to. You have to be born again. You cannot please God by any deeds because there is not one good deed that you can do that to please God. You can be the best person in this entire world and try to please God and say, Lord, see how good I am. See how wonderful things in my life. Lord, I'm so good. I, Lord, I do this and I do that. And God says, it's still not good. The only time you're going to be good if my spirit will help you. But the funny thing is, listen to this, the funny thing is, if you notice that, since you were born again, from the time you got born again, you got in more trouble than before. Do you know why? And you thought to yourself, I'm supposed to be better. Why I feel all the time that, you know, I do things wrong. It is interesting because now the Holy Spirit is your guide. Now you are alive, you are alive to everything that you do wrong. Before you were dead, you didn't feel it, you didn't care. Now, everything that is not good, the Holy Spirit will help you and lead you out and show you. That's why when you are born again, God came in and He began to clean up things one by one. And you begin to feel that. The change has come. Amen. Amen. That's why, you know, oh Lord. I thought you called me to peace. I, was, I thought you called me to a wonderful life. And uh, it's just such amazing, wonderful thing. Yeah, sure. But there's work God is doing. Amen. Amen. Now the Spirit of God came in and replacing all the things. The law of sin and death replacing by life and the Spirit. Amen. Amen. So you need to be patient, knowing what God is doing in your life. It's normal to go through these things. It means you're alive. Amen. So verse 9 says, But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. And of, if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is alive because of righteousness.
Did you understand this? If Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. What is the body? Your flesh is dead because of sin. But the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. So the Spirit of God is alive because of Christ, because of righteousness, because of His righteousness. The Spirit is alive in you. And of course, there's a promise that uh, the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead will raise you as well. So the whole point of that teaching that Paul brought in this uh, 11 verses from verse 1 to 11 is to explain to the believers in Rome so that they may not be mistaken themselves. See, a lot of people, they're going from church to church looking for places that they may be relieved. Maybe I'll go here and God will give me a deliverance. Maybe I'll go here, God will give me this. God will. It's good to seek things. It's good to seek things. But we must be more stable to allow the Spirit of God to do things in our life in season and out of season. All right? Amen. Because it's a process that God is doing. It's a process. Glory to Jesus. And it moves on and on, but, 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 but this, this chapter must be understood very carefully by everybody. And this chapter is not just for, you know, unbelievers. This chapter is for the church in Rome. For believers, that they may understand. Paul was to make sure that people know what they stand upon. That they will not look for something else. Hallelujah. So remember one thing what Paul is saying here, and that is crucial. Are you religious or are you born again? It's two different things. Are you religious or you are born again? If you are religious, then you have to belong to some kind of religion. Like somebody called us on television and they said, and they said, are you Christians or you are Jews? People st still don't realize they're still talking about religion. Are you, are you with me? Yeah. Okay, are you a Jew or are you a Christian? I was paused for a moment. I didn't know what to say. I said, we believe in Christ. We are born again people. No, no, no. But are you a Christian or are you a Jew? So I said, I'm not Catholic. I'm not Orthodox uh, Christian, as a Christian. All right? I'm not Protestant. I'm not this, I'm not that. I'm just born again believer. I'm Jew by birth, but I'm born again believer. I'm a Jewish person who believe in Christ. Amen. Amen. See, if you're going to talk to Russian people, they're all Christians. Did you know that? They're all Russian Orthodox Church. They have national religion, Russian Orthodox Church. So are, are you born again or you belong to our religion? So if you say that I'm Catholic, then you still belong into religion. But if I'm saying I'm Christ, I'm born again, that's what God is talking about. Not about religion. Hallelujah. Some people say they don't even understand that uh, what is the difference between Catholicism and Christianity. They say, I'm Catholic. I said, are you a Christian? No, I'm Catholic. So you're not following Christ? Christian is the one who is following Christ, right? Or oh, I'm this, I'm that. The distinction is supposed to be, are you born again or not? By the Spirit of God. Where the law of God is changing you 
from the sin of death to life. Amen. Amen. When you walk in by the Spirit and not by the flesh. That's what Jesus died for, for Jews and Gentiles alike. So the commonwealth of Israel, you have to understand with that too, that it's not just you coming, becoming under the feet of Jewish people and the Jewish people are superiors. No, that's not the truth. The commonwealth of Israel was given to Israel because of the law. Because of the Messiah Jesus himself. But before, before Jesus came, God gave the law. By which, by the way, every believer lives today, not, not even knowing. Amen. Amen. We must understand these things very deeply. I know that uh, we want a quick fix, and me too. We want just to come to God and everything will be fixed, everything will be done, everything will be answered, everything will be set, free to go, and uh, there we go. But my friend, it doesn't work that way. Amen? Amen. God is going to install His laws into your life and will make you live by them. Will make you live by them. So you will fulfill. Look at it, what it says. The righteous requirements of the law. There are some requirements in your life and by your life that are righteous that you will be able to fulfill. And the only answer, one of the answers that we are going to have before the Lord when we're going to stand up there. Unbelievers will answer why they didn't receive Jesus. That will be their judgment. All right? Because the greatest sin for any person on this earth is to deny Christ. So what are believers will be judged for? One of the judgments that believers will be judged for, hear this. Faithfulness is good. Giving is good. Praying is good. Doing these things is good. Doing things, it's good. But there's another way and another thing that believers will answer before the Lord for is when we are not allowing the Holy Spirit to change things in our life to the will of God. Amen? Amen. When we are not allowing the Holy Spirit to change things in our life. Have you noticed what the Bible says? And I'm coming to the end. Have you noticed what the Bible says? That you shall fulfill the righteous requirements. Fulfill. Of the law. All right. When the Spirit of God comes in, He helps you to live by them. And what does it mean, fulfill the righteous requirements of the law? It means... When God comes in with His law, when God brings back His law into your life, and God wants to do the things right by the Spirit, and you're not allowing Him, we are going to answer the Lord for it. When we are not allowing the Spirit of God to fulfill the righteous requirements of the law. 
Not because, and you, you see, now God will judge us not because we cannot, but because we do not. That's why it is very important to believe and to, uh, to, 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 to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit and be attentive to the Holy Spirit because it's the Holy Spirit who is our guide now to obey Him. Amen? Amen. What we can do, what we cannot. Yeah, we can say Jesus forgives. Yeah, He does. He forgives. But one of the things we're going to answer before the Lord there is for the things that the Spirit of God wanted to do and we did not allow. See, in the Old Testament, when people did not obey the law, they died. It was death penalty. In the New Testament, we're not going to die. We've already been set free from sin and death. But we're still going to answer for the Lord why we didn't obey. And we would not say, I didn't have enough strength. That's not the truth because the Spirit of God gives the, tr the, the strength. It is our choice when we understand this. Amen? Amen. And thank God God has given us a prolonged life Amen. to learn how to obey the voice of the Spirit in each and every way. Amen. Amen. That is amazing. So, to be a believer or born again a believer, it's not that easy. We think it's, oh, it's so wonderful. It's, yeah, it's great. It's powerful. It's amazing. But imagine God has invaded your life set you free cleansed you, and now your life has turned into a totally different direction. It's life. The course of life is moving. And God says, no, stop. Now I'm the master. It's not easy. It's not easy to submit. And many times we fight with it, but thank God for his patience. He knows. He knows that unless His law will begin to work fully, we're not pleasing Him. Amen? Amen. So think about this. Those who think they are religious or belong to any, any religion. Oh, my God. We need to be belong to Jesus. Not religion. We need to be born again and walk by His Spirit. That is the cause that, that God has caused in our life. There's nothing to do with where you're going and how you're doing these things and uh, where you from. It, it has nothing to do. Nothing to, oh, I'm going to this church, I'm going to that church. Good. Go to any church. Go to anywhere. It doesn't matter where we go. Jesus is the same. He doesn't change. The Spirit of God does not change. He will still require exactly the same thing. But Lord, if I'm going to go to Baptist Church, maybe it will be a bit easier. No. It's going to be the same. Jesus is the same in Baptist Church as in Pentecostal. People makes the difference, not God, in this sense. Amen? Amen. It doesn't matter where we go, we're still going to obey God the way He says. He still is going to bring his environment into your life. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why, my God, when I was free from God, I was full of sin. Amen. But I was free from God. So anybody would tell me something to change, I would send them a little bit too far. Mind your own business. That's not your business. I, I like the way I am and no problems. But when I got free from sin and get in, under the presence of God, when people begin to change me, I had to ferment my bush. Mine. 
and submit because, yeah, now it's not me who live anymore, it's Christ. Well, thank you, friends, for joining in today with House of the Ministries, and I hope you enjoyed the programming this week, actually today or this week, and the whole week I was talking about the book of Romans, chapter 8, uh, just a few verses there. But here's the good news. If you enjoy studying this precious book, wonderful book, the book of Romans, which is the most powerful book out of those powerful teachings in the Bible, I have to present something to you. And that is previously what I have done. I have taped uh, the whole teaching on the book of Romans, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. I was teaching here. And uh, that was an amazing thing. So now we have on DVDs the whole set of the book of Romans, of the book of Romans, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. And now today, we are given uh, under that discount price. See, that price was before $160. Why is it so expensive? Is because you have 16 chapters in the book of Romans, and each chapter would have like a, a two hours on DVDs, but uh, you're going to have over 20 DVDs on that book of two hours each teaching me each chapter, and that is a powerful tool. Can you imagine to go through the book of Romans verse by verse? I mean, maybe sometimes by yourself you wouldn't have that time and opportunity or maybe um, um, ability or interest, but you're going to do this with my help. If you like what I teach, if you like what you see, I would recommend you to get these DVDs, and now it is on sale. It's not 160 it's not 120 it's $100. For all these powerful packed DVDs in the Book of Romans, with shipping included, it's a perfect gift for the holidays that are coming up to yourself or to somebody else. You can purchase these DVDs and offer to your pastor or your groups or cell groups or Bible studies and do likewise by going through these DVDs studying this verse by verse. That would be an amazing, amazing tool for you or for your group. But if you want to have it just for yourself, again, you can purchase it and study on your own time. If you are tired, you, you got to go someplace, pause it, stop it, leave, come back, and continue. This will be your powerful tool to study the book of Romans with me verse by verse, chapter by chapter, and I guarantee you, by the time you're going to be finishing that book, you will be <laughs> equipped much greater. Your faith will grow. You'll have the victory in many areas in your life because the book of Romans carry that ability. It has that power. It has that information to set you free in many ways, in many areas of your life. You'll know about your life, sin, righteousness, the power of God, the Holy Spirit's presence, Israel's role, and many others about faith and many other things you will learn through that book, chapter by chapter, verse by verse, and it's only $100. So give us a call today and order that set of DVDs today on this discount price. It's not expensive. You're going to have so many DVDs, and uh, I mean, where, you, where can you get so many DVDs, around 20 plus DVDs for $100? Shipping is included with such a valuable information. I would encourage you today to call and purchase that for yourself or for your groups. Amen. Well, we're coming to the end of this program. Of course, you can call us right now and uh, we'll pray with you, believe God for your miracle. But I want to give an opportunity to say this. Thank you so much, partners. We've been raising $30,000 because we want to go up with our timing on television and we do need this money in order for us to uh, uh, change our time slot. We do need this money to come up with. Now, a few thousand dollars already came in. We begin to, 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 to um, um, uh, deal with this situation and negotiate about the time and everything else, but we do need still uh, these finances, I would say around $24,000, $25,000 to come up with to finish the goal. Would you be willing to help us today or maybe you would like to become a partner with this ministry. Maybe you would like to give a one-time gift of $1,000, $500, $100 toward that goal. Please do that because our, the time slot is very important on television. 
the more it is um, available, the more people will watch. So help us today. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for your generosity. May God continue to bless you and fill your life with his presence, power, and joy and strength. Amen. Give us a call, and God bless you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Father, we just invite you tonight to have your way in your people tonight. And Lord, speak to your people, Father, that we would know your voice and hear you, Lord, and obey, that all of Canada would see you and know there is a God in Israel. Let the glory of the Lord be seen upon you. And the nation shall come unto thy life, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thine eyes round about and see, they gather themselves all together. Oh, arise and shine, for thy light is come. Arise and shine, for thy light is come. Arise and shine, for thy light is come. The glory of the Lord is seen upon thee. Let the glory of the Lord be seen upon thee. And the sons of those who afflicted you, and all who have despised you will bow down. Then they shall call you the city of the Lord, Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Oh, arise and shine, for thy light is come. Arise and shine, for thy light is come. Arise and shine, for thy light is come. The glory of the Lord is seen upon thee. Let the glory of the Lord be seen upon thee. Hallelujah! Lord, arise and shine on your people. Let your light shine in us and through us. So that all the world would see you. Oh, arise and shine, for thy light is come. Arise and shine, for thy light is come. Arise and shine, for thy light is come. The glory of the Lord is seen upon thee. Oh, arise and shine, for thy light is come. Arise and shine, for thy light is come. Arise and shine, for thy light is come. The glory of the Lord is seen upon thee. The glory of the Lord is seen upon thee. Let the glory of the Lord be seen upon thee. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the glory be seen and let Israel be glad in his maker. Let Israel be glad in his maker. Let the sons of Zion. House of David, Jewish Messianic Ministry is produced and sponsored by viewers like you. We appreciate your support, which is allowing us to continue to broadcast our programming. Thank you, and God bless you. Shalom.